In this video, we're going to build a guessing game so that we can introduce the concepts of loops and if-then statements. So the first thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and open up a file. We'll call this guessing game. What we're going to do is write a game that uh, where a computer will guess a number that you're thinking of between 1 and 100. So let's go ahead. We'll first start by importing our scanner because we're going to need to get some user input. And we'll build our class, public class guessing game. And then inside of our class, we'll put our main method, public static void main. And let's go ahead and save it. We'll hit control O and then save our file. So the first thing we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to create our scanner. So we'll say scanner in is equal to new scanner system dot in. And now we have a scanner so we can retrieve some user input. So we're going to want to tell the user what to do here. Let's go ahead and write out our menus and try to get the user input first so we can see what this is going to look like. So we're going to output to the user, tell the user what this is going to do, guess a number between 1 and 100. Now let's go ahead and put a blank line after that just to make it clear that there's some separation. Alright, so now if we get to this point, we should be able to compile and test our program. Let's hit Control O to save, Control X to exit. We'll type Java C guessing game dot Java, and then Java guessing game. And so far we're working, so that's very good. Let's go back into our application. So we have, uh, we're basically telling the user what to do, but we're not doing anything with that. And we're going to want to tell, we're going to have the user or the computer guess the user's answer over and over again. So the first thing we were want to use to repeat this statement over and over again is we're going to use a while statement. And we need to identify when the while statement should finish. So let's declare a variable that we're going to use to get the user's input. We'll call it input. We'll just set it to zero to start. And we're going to have a while statement while and then we're going to while we're going to run while some condition is true let's go ahead and say while input is not equal to 2 because we're gonna have the user choose 2 when uh, when we've guessed the number correctly so now let's put output a menu here system dot out dot print line is your number and we're going to have to guess the number let's go ahead we're gonna start off just by guessing 50 the guess is gonna be 50 so is your number and we'll go ahead and write a nice complete sentence there. Is your number, and then we'll insert guess followed by a question mark. And then we'll tell the user what to do in this case. System.out.println. Choice one is no, my number is lower. System.out.println. Choice two is yes, that is my number. And the third choice will be system.out.println. Three, no, my number is higher. Then we'll put another blank line at the end just to provide some separation. Formatting is important. Just helps the user to understand what you're doing. So then we'll retrieve the user's input and at this point we can actually compile and test because what will happen is the computer will guess and guess and guess but it's just going to keep guessing 50. So let's go ahead and just compile and test. Guessing in Java C guessing game.java. Now see we messed up. We forgot to include our scanner. So let's go ahead back in. And here you see input is equal to next int, but we didn't actually we we didn't we didn't attach our in.nextint to say that this method is part of the scanner class or scanner object that we're using. So let's go. And this is why it's important to test uh, compile and test often. So let's type java c guessing game.java java guessing game and we'll say if we hit three we're gonna get the menu again If we hit one we get the menu again it's not until we agree that two is my number so well, let's assume that our first number was 50 and if our number is 50 this program is accurate 100 percent of the time but that's probably not always going to be our number so now we have to actually add in some logic to uh, to evaluate this so we have you know we have our input we're telling the user what to do 
We're writing, uh, we're, we're guessing a number. We're using a while statement to repeat over and over and over again and keep retrieving input. But we want to actually do something based on this. And what we're going to want to do is if the user says that the number is lower, we want to guess a number that's smaller than our last guess. So here we have 50. And if the user says our number is higher, we're going to use a number that is higher than our last guess. So we can actually do some evaluation using if statements in our while loop. So we will say if input is equal to 1, we need to do something. If our input is equal to 1, then we're going to need to make this lower. How much lower? Well, a good rule of thumb would be half the distance between our, our last guess and our lowest guess so far. So we haven't guessed anything, uh, and we should probably keep track of what the lowest thing that we've guessed is. So let's go ahead up here, and we'll go ahead and create a variable called low. We'll set low equal to 1 because we know that the lowest it's going to go is 1. And to set our new value, we will say guess is equal to low plus guess minus low divided by 2. And what that, what's going to happen now is that whatever our last guess was, we're going to take half of the space between that and the low guess. So this will work really well if our number is always 1. You know, we'll always get down to that value. So if we hit Control O and Control X and compile our program and run, if our number is 1, so is your number 50? No, it's lower. Is it 25? No, it's lower. Is it 13? No, it's lower. Is it 7? No, it's lower. 4? Lower. 2? Lower. And eventually we're going to get to the point where our number is guessed. So yes, that's our number. But this only works if we're only going down. And unfortunately, we may have numbers that are not, you know, 7 or 4 or 2 or 1. We might actually have other numbers that are higher. Or they might be 6 or 5, in which case we're going to need to tell the program to increase our guess if the input is 3. So we could type if input is equal to 3. But that would actually be kind of wasteful because if we've already determined that the input is 1, we don't want to do this. So we can actually use else if. So we'll just go ahead and put this here else if input equals 3. In this case we're going to make this higher. So we're going to need a new variable here. Let's go ahead up. We're going to make our high guess 101. And the reason for that is we're actually never going to guess 101 because the math we're going to use here guess plus high minus guess divided by 2 which is kind of the opposite of what we did for the low guess you can see here our, we're going to set guess equal to what our last guess was plus half the distance between high and guess but the problem is if we only set this to 100 what we're going to end up with is we're going to guess 99 99 99 99 and never get to 100 because let's say we get to 99 guess will be 99 we'll be adding 100 minus 99 divided by 2 and when we're using integer division we don't we don't take decimals integers are not automatically converted to a double or to a float in java so one or 99 or I'm sorry 100 minus 99 divided by 2 is always going to be 0 so we set it to 101 even though we're never going to guess that high it allows us to get to 100 and make that last guess so this will work really well but we also need to do something else if we know like if we have the user enter 1 and know that the number is lower then we can actually set the value to be a lower or the high value to be that number so if you think about that, if we guess 50 the first time and the user says, no, my number is lower, we know that the guess is not going to be higher than 50. So we can actually save some effort here by typing high is equal to guess. And we can do the same thing for low. Low is equal to guess. So now we have a full program that should guess a number between 1 and 100. Now if our, at the end of our while loop, we can write system.out dot print line your number was guess now if we've made no typos oh, dot java java guessing game let's say our number is 61 we can say is your number 50 no it's higher is it 75 no it's lower is it 62 no it's lower is it 56 no, it's higher. Is it 59? No, it's higher. Is it 60? No, it's higher. Is it 61? Yes, that's my number. 
So this will eventually guess every number out there. A good question is how, long, how many guesses will it take? We can actually include that in our program. We can actually just say int tries is equal to zero. And then every time we accept a guess, we can increase tries. But we might want to actually do a little better than that because what happens if we run if we go back and we run our program and the user enters seven? Well we're just we're actually not doing something wrong here. We're not chain we're not making a new calculation. But the user has entered something that we don't necessarily want to accept. So when they hit seven, you can see we're just kind of repeating the menu. But uh, so we don't need to necessarily have a while loop that would ask the user over and over and over again. We could do that though. We could have a while loop that will continue to output this menu until the user enters something that is, uh, is between 1 and 3. In this case we're going to go ahead and exit our program. We can just calculate tries simply by adding, we could have the while loop here and just increment every time we execute an inner while or exit the inner while loop like while input is less than or equal to one, less than one and input is greater than three and we could have this run over and over and over and over again but it would not really be necessary in this program so we can just do this we can say if input is equal to one tries is plus plus else if input is equal to three tries plus plus because we're only we're only setting uh, tries to a new, new guess when we've made an additional or when we've made one more guess we should actually start tries at one instead of zero because the first guess 50 is gonna is gonna be one guess so now at the bottom we can say system dot out dot print line it took tries guesses to guess your number Now if we, sorry, if we compile our program and run it, and we say, well, my number is, let's say our number in this case is 80. We're going to say higher, we're going to say higher, we're going to say lower, we're going to say lower, we're going to say higher, higher, and that's my number. So it took seven guesses to guess your number. Your number was 80. Now, there's one problem. If we run this again, let's say our, fifth, our number is 50. My number is, that's my number. Well, now we have a problem because it says it took one guesses to guess your number. Well, that's not really, that's not really proper. So let's go ahead and change this and we'll add one more if statement to the bottom. And we'll say, if tries is equal to one, system.out.println, it took we know it's one, so one try or one guess to guess your number. Else, now no matter what we do, we'll have prop a proper term here. Java guessing game. If we say 50, it took one guess. Otherwise, let's say our number is 75. No, my number is higher. Yes. It took two guesses. So now we've got proper English built into our program just by checking that one if statement. So this should give you a little bit of practice on working with a while loop, on trying a real program, and understanding some of the basic logic of, that's involved in evaluating if else statements. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to practice your coding.